Hello everyone, today I will be installing a EVGA hybrid cooling kit on my Titan X Pascal. I am using the 1080-1070 hybrid kit purchased from EVGA, the, their web store directly. I um, haven't seen it anywhere else for sale, so I bought it directly from them for about $140 shipped. Uh, have seen some people use this kit on their Titan X's with some pretty good success and with minor modifications make it fit so I decided to dive in and try it out myself uh, I'm just removing the back plate here I'm doing a numerous amount of tiny screws I was baffled by how many there were actually you'll probably see it maybe you won't I don't remember but there are several times I going through this I didn't notice one or overlooked one just briefly they are very small um, but it was they were always they were very easy very simple to remove and the back plate is off little thermal pad on the back of the card there back to removing the, uh, the actual GPU core screws that hold the uh, the actual aluminum heat sink to the card itself and the GPU. Got those screws, see? There it is right there. I missed one of the little screws, maybe a couple of them even. They are kind of hard to see actually, but once you take them off you can see the ref light reflecting out of the holes there. So as I'm moving through this, um, uh, if you decide to do this on your own, get a magnetic tray to hold all the screws. Make sure you have a magnetic tipped screwdriver, um, as I found that to be both of those things were extremely useful as, as far as tracking the screws. Um, and the, be the best part was, too, if you lose a screw or something like that, the actual uh, EVGA kit comes with screws that you can it comes with these little uh, studs like these are little like studs that they actually screw in and hold the shroud um, to the PCB and so the the hybrid kit actually came with plenty of replacement screws that were very that were all compatible with the stock card itself so I have many extras laying around which thankfully is a good thing because pretty sure I did end up losing some over the process of I've taken it apart a couple times now um, just to adjust some different things uh, when I first put it on you'll see it later on in the clip here too I'll point it out but uh, the um, what do you call it the a uh, couple of spots where the actual like EVGA base plate uh, would mount up and everything wasn't a hundred percent flush very close still usable without actual modifications um, however I did modify it in I, t I did cut the extra spot for the power connector because the 1070 1080 only come with an 8 pin I believe not an 8 and a 6 or an 8 and an 8 so I had to make room for that. Um, then I had to cut a small square out of the actual base plate um, for, I believe it was just another VRM or something like that. Uh, not a big deal, I just took a little hacksaw and cut that out. Um, I'll, show, I'll point that out when I get to that part too, but um, I forgot to take the, the uh, thumb screws off the uh, DVI uh, port. <laughs> That's why I couldn't get the, uh, the I.O. plate off. Uh, so here's the card right now with the uh, heat sink removed. There is thermal paste still there. I'll probably be cleaning that off here shortly. So I'm going to be applying... Uh, I did end up using the thermal paste that came on the hybrid kit itself. 
and since then I have actually replaced that a couple times. Uh, I think the first time I did this, I actually actually over tightened the screws, the mounting screws for the pump to the cart itself. It was a little snug uh, when I took off the pump later on because I, my temps didn't seem cool enough to me. So I took that off and noticed that the paste had been kind of squished out a lot. So I think I over tightened it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we're going through this process too right now. Another good thing to bring up is to just take your time. Uh, you know, if something doesn't come off right away, doesn't come loose right away, take your time. Look for any hidden screws because there's a lot of little hidden screws on this thing. Um, and if you have, you know, like, the better tools, the easier it's going to be. Make sure you use the correct size tools like those little studs in the back I was using I believe like a four or five millimeter socket for that I know some people I've seen use like an actual crescent wrench and other you know something like that and just it's not a, I just feel like that's a really bad idea for something like that for this project rather just because you know it's best to have the right tool for the job I get it. if you don't have that available to you I'd suggest taking spending a couple bucks and getting the right thing save yourself some time and make everything a lot easier down the road um, so here I'm just cleaning off some of the thermal pads because I did intend on replacing the thermal pads so here this is the 1080 1070 base plate just checking it out lining it up as you can see on the bottom there I guess the closest to the camera that little silver uh, VRM is going to be in the way. Um, so I'm going to line this up the best I can. Grab an, I'm going to grab a marker and mark out what I need to cut. So just get a rough idea. For this this part right here, I uh, went into the garage so I didn't get metal shavings all over the house. But um, I went to the garage and I just used a uh, metal well, I forget the heck the tool is called. It wasn't a tin snip. It was, well, I guess it probably was a tin snip, but it was a much, much larger one. And it just cut right through it. No big deal. Probably should have used a hacksaw. I'd recommend just using a small hacksaw blade or something like that. It would probably be a lot smaller, finer, easier cut um, once you get it started, I guess. But the uh... So here I am grinding down where the uh, capacitors they kind of line up in this in this area here in the back. I just kind of took my Dremel tool and sanded and uh, grinded this thing down a lot. <laughs> I, 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 I took it... <clears throat> excuse me. I, I think I took it down a lot more than I... I did take it down more than I needed to, but it seems like a lot more just because of how much time I spent actually grinding it. So here I am back. You can see... Um, the uh, cutout for the uh, power connector and I cut out a little square there for the uh, right, right by the fan with the VRN module. I cut it a little too far but it isn't a big deal. Didn't cause any issues so far. Um, the grinding process was really it wasn't bad at all with the Dremel tool. It didn't take long. Got through it pretty easily. Uh, but I really I feel like the fit is much nicer since I just grinded that back section down a ways. That's the only part I actually had to grind down was just that back. Basically where the uh, heat sink on the uh, uh, base plate, uh, the reverse side of that heat sink, there's kind of a little lip there or a couple mounting screws you can kind of see and just grind it down until it sits flush, uh, taped it off and stuff like that just to protect try to protect the card a little bit so I didn't go if the uh, journal tool got away from me but all in all very simple to cut this metal very simple to grind it didn't take long um, this is the actual pump here I'm going to test fit it a little bit make sure everything f lines up makes contact properly um, so now this part when I actually put the screws in here um, Ended up trying to use their screws, but then I was like, you know what? I can. I think I can just reuse them. They look pretty much the same. 
and they were pretty much the same. They worked fine. But this part, for sure, I'd recommend you don't have to tighten them down very much at all. I definitely, I'm fairly confident that I did over tighten these the first time I did this. I tightened it until it actually felt tight, which I don't think was the right thing to do at all. Uh, since since I've repasted it and reapplied the pump and reapplied the paste and tightened everything up, what I feel is an effective level, the temps have are really kind of leveled out and they're way more where they feel like they should be and what I've seen other people's temps be at. So at that part, definitely make sure you're not over tightening the uh, screws there. They do not need to be very tight. Just tight enough so the pump isn't loose pretty much, but... So this part, just doing a little cable management test fitting. The uh, shroud has a spot where the kind of cables are out behind there so they don't hit the fan. Um, I did, you can see uh, the blue on the right side there, I did use, I did have some more uh, thermal tape or thermal pads, whatever you want to call them, um, that I applied because I got, uh, you needed more because it doesn't cover up all the memory chips because the Titan X has more memory chips than the 1080, 1070, so you definitely need some thermal pads, some extra ones. And probably to cover up a couple of VRMs too, just because there's extra ones of those as well. Um, this part was pretty simple. The shroud, you know, put the plug the wires in, uh, and then just basically just uh, put the shroud on with the screws, the uh, given screws, and pretty much good to go. Um, yeah, this is the part where I'm routing the cable kind of under or yeah under the underneath the hose just so it looked a little cleaner. It didn't really seem to fit anywhere else. It wasn't really a good spot for this, the wire, for the fan. Um, and then I have... Yeah, that's pretty much... I mean, the rest of this is pretty much it. You just kind of build it back up in reverse order. You use those studs uh, to mount the base plate to the card, attach the pump. Um, then you can reuse the stock a Titan X uh, back uh, back plate. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> back plate. If you would like to use that, I don't think this kit came with a back plate. I don't recall. I didn't see it in the box, and I don't think I saw it advertised. But I preferred the Titan X back plate. Um, so far, the card is running great. A lot cooler. Um, way quieter a lot cooler. Uh, when I was running it, um, before I decided to, you know, take this, because I feel like, you know, a lot of people are like, hey, this is a risky project, you know, it's an expensive card, but I feel this kit is perfect. I don't even, I'm, <laughs> I'd be surprised, honestly, if EVGA built a kit for the Titan, just because I know several people that on the internet that have already used this kit on their Titans and are getting good results and if they're not using this kit most of the most of the guys I see are using actual like physical water blocks like whole card water blocks and having very good results with that so but this is a cheaper alternative um, as I don't have uh, you know a water cooler in my computer already my CPU is an all-in-one cooler so maybe in the future I'll do something like that, but for now I've preferred to go this route. Just, you know, I guess I've never, I don't have any friends that land with, you know, non-all-in-one coolers, but full system water-cooled. I don't know how easy it is to transport a computer like that, but with the all-in-ones I feel pretty confident moving them from, you know, place to place. Not a big deal, Not nothing too worrisome. Um, Trying to think if I have any other tips for you guys. I'm sure you'll leave questions in other comments. But uh, it's really not, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Just take your time. I'd say I spent 
at least probably two hours for the you know on this project to get it to where I'm comfortable and happy with it um, and right now it's sitting in my computer and it's running great runs around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius depending on what type of load or what type of uh, you know your ambient temp obviously but it uh, it runs cool quiet much better than it did you know the factory out of the box that was kind of ridiculous which kind of it didn't really it didn't really I shouldn't say it really hurt, didn't hurt your performance because the card performs spectacularly uh, but now with it running cool and quiet like this it is much much and much nicer because it was loud prior to actually having the water cooler it was kind of annoying it's been a long time since I've had a um, what do you call them uh, I guess a blower style cooler I haven't had one since my 7970 uh, from like four or five years ago however long it was now since those came out but the, I remember that thing being very loud and running very hot so and I put that thing on a cooler too and that thing is much nicer still have it good card don't plan on getting rid of that anytime soon um, but basically uh, right now I'm <laughs> I am done assembling the card and it is ready to be tested out and I guess I'm coming back to try and fix something else I don't know but yeah this is uh, this is my Titan X hybrid kit um, that I it's a great project. I totally recommend doing it. Just be careful and don't screw up your card if you try to do this on your own. Alright, leave any comments. Like this video if you liked it. I'll say all the stuff that everyone else does. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, feel free to leave them behind. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks for checking out my video and I'll be doing more stuff like this in the future. Thanks.